a little meta. <laughs> hmm. All right, uh, let's get to the news. At the end of a week where the world was left to wonder whether the president of the United States has been compromised by a hostile foreign power. That's right. That's a <laughs> sentence that I just said here in 2018. Uh, Donald Trump invited Russian President Vladimir Putin to the White House this fall and then spent the weekend doing some good old-fashioned rage tweeting <laughs> where he once again claimed that Russian interference in our election was nothing more than a hoax. Quote, so President Obama knew about Russia before the election. Why didn't he do something about it? Why didn't he tell our campaign? Because it's all a big hoax. That's why. And he thought Crooked Hillary was going to win. So, guys... We have lots of other news to discuss from the weekend and today, but I don't want to just breeze past this. Uh, it seems pretty clear that Trump meant exactly what he said during the press conference with Vladimir Putin. Uh, yes? What yeah. do you guys think? Yeah, well, so... Just walk so back the walk back. Walk he, back the walk back. It's a walk forward. <laughs> he walked it back. I mean, he got a little too much credit. We talked about this. He got a little too much credit for his... Uh, initial walk back because midway through reading the prepared remarks like a hostage where he said that uh, actually I don't think Dan Coates is a mental patient and uh, I trust our intelligence community and not Vladimir Putin. He threw in, uh, but it could have been anybody. He could have been anybody. He couldn't stop himself from throwing in the, he walked it back in the initial walk back already and this is just taking it to its logical conclusion. Yeah. Tommy, do we often invite uh, leaders of Hostile foreign governments who've attacked our elections to the White House. Do you see a lot of value in that? No, you're probably not going to get a lot done. You also, you don't often invite a foreign head of state who you just met with accomplishing absolutely nothing <laughs> for a follow-up on your agenda list meeting where you did some soft treason maybe, and no one really knows what happened. And it's, it's not just us uh, libs who are surprised about this. Uh, I believe the news was broken to... Dan Coates, the director of national intelligence, by Andrea Mitchell during an interview on Friday. And uh, I think he said something like, excuse me? Yeah. No, listen, Dan was exactly where he should be, which was sitting in Aspen on stage with Andrea Mitchell. Where all great thought leaders are. It's, it's important for the head of the DNI to be there in Aspen on a stage. <laughs> where ideas not working, are exchanged. Where ideas are flourishing. Yeah. The idea in that session was, oh, no, the president is a corrupt moron. <laughs> Or is he, question mark, in conversation? Andrea Mitchell, yeah, Dan Coates. I mean, there's articles about whether national security officials are, are ever going to get a full readout of what was discussed. The Russians are just announcing things left and right, new partnerships on Syria, things they're going to do vis-a-vis -vis Iran, et cetera, et cetera. And his own administration has no idea what was discussed, what he agreed to, what he promised, except for maybe this translator who's just you know, stuck playing monkey in the middle here. Between Come on, Pod Save America, Vladimir translator. Yeah, where yeah. are you, translator? And how's that memory? Huh? You take any notes? <laughs> I want to make just two quick points. Sure. One, I think we need to get... Trump is like Memento. I think that he is yeah. losing track of what he's supposed to say, and he needs to get a tattoo that says, uh, I accept the conclusions of the intelligence community on this arm, and then maybe, I don't know, uh, don't do crimes on this <laughs> arm. <laughs> and also, too, it is so desperate to invite Vladimir Putin to the U.S. right after the Helsinki summit. Uh, it is... Well, it's just in time for the midterms. He's got to be... Uh, he's going to join him on the stump. Yeah, he's got to... <laughs> How does uh, Putin poll in Michigan? If he goes to, uh, if Putin goes to uh, uh, Wisconsin, he'll have been there more than Hillary. <laughs> 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 I, that was a long journey for that one. And, yeah. and don't out of the way. tweet out of at me way. about it. I know. I know all the reasons that you have a problem with my saying that. I already know. I know I should do better. I will do better. But it's just, <laughs> the point I was only, I was getting towards eventually, it's just, it's, it's, it's a little bit, you know, you went on a date. You had a good date. You can't invite him to another date when you get home. You think it's too desperate? It's too desperate. You got to wait two days. Wait two, three days. Wait two days. Maybe maybe Putin would text you, Trump. Did you think John wrote Swingers? Is that why we're here? <laughs> this, this bit? Uh, how cool would that have been? Huh? What if we replaced him with the other one? Honestly, I thought until last year. That's why I signed <laughs> up for this company. I don't know if anyone would notice. Um, what about Trump's argument that the Obama administration never warned his campaign about Russia? I realize that it's easy to blow past a lot of these things, but I just yeah. let's do a little fact check on this one, I mean, Tommy. It, it, he's the president of the United States. He doesn't need to be like he can get access to any information that we have in the U.S. government from the CIA, the NSA, the entire intelligence community anytime he wants. He can walk into a room and say, "Tell me all the secrets, all the cool shit, the moon landing being faked, allegedly, what Area 51, all the cool shit, all the Russian hacking shit." He has access to all of it. Him to go out there and claim he wasn't told about any of this is so ludicrous and like lo and behold of course as it always happens now it leaks out that he got a very detailed briefing 
Uh, August of 2016. Right after all of this went down. Uh, and it, look, it was in the press. Like, he didn't need to be told by Obama. Hillary right? Clinton told him about it at the debate. Also, I would no just puppet. point out, no puppet. I would, no puppet, no puppet. You're you, puppet. You, you're, you're, the puppet. Pu- you're the puppet. I'm the puppet. No, he's the puppet. We're the puppets. <laughs> Both puppets. Punch and Judy. Those are puppets. What are, wait, what are those puppets from? They're, <laughs> they're, they're some sort of old-fashioned puppet show. Give Punch, 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 and Punch and Judy. Judy. Punch and Judy. Reference. I don't know. I don't know, any, I don't know anything more about them. Other than there's Punch and there's Judy. This is very Borscht Belt. Listen. A lot, love the, is getting a lot of tweets after this. Listen. <laughs> the point I was going to make is only, why didn't President Obama warn me about this hoax that isn't real? That is his argument. I should have been, this entire scandal is a made-up hoax in which nothing happened. I However, should have been told about it. I should have been told about it by the president uh, before, before I did the crimes. Why didn't President Obama tell me about the crimes I was about to commit? Yeah, I mean, he was he was briefed in August of 2016. He then was told that Russia played a direct role in the hacks against the DNC, which we know about because he then said, Russia, if you're listening, please find the rest of the deleted emails and go hack them. And then and they, they did. did. <laughs> well, they didn't what find are we doing? those. No, 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 just... John. John, you're being unfair. Right, okay? Right, right, they right. did a different different they, hack. Different they, did, hack. They, they took his implica- invitation and did a, a related hack. Yeah. Which is apparently exculpatory. He just acts like a casual observer of the country that he runs. It drives me fucking crazy. That's what happens when a pundit, a Fox News pundit, you know, becomes president. You yeah. know. Uh, so Trump and various Republican politicians and pundits also spent a lot of time this weekend lying about a newly released, previously classified application by the FBI to obtain a warrant to monitor the communications of Carter Page, a former Trump campaign official who the government had reason to believe was interacting with Russian officials. Whoo! Uh, the law that allows the FBI to apply for this kind of warrant is known as the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which is why it's often referred to as a FISA warrant. We had some people on Twitter asking us to please give us a, a brief on this, what, what a FISA warrant is. Tommy, before we get into the specific mm-hmm. case, what is the process for obtaining a FISA warrant? Uh, it's incredibly onerous. I, we, we, you can now read it. I mean, there's a long application where you have to fill out all this probable cause that then you put before a judge. George and... Soros. <laughs> right, right. George, George, Sor- George Soros gets Hillary Clinton on the blower. You're right. You get one of his uh, typing helpers to he help presses, put together. He presses the deep state Steve speed dial. Sorry. Sorry for interrupting. So, <laughs> yeah. So you go to a judge. Uh, all of them in this instance were appointed by Republicans, and they approve it or not. And then you have to go back on a regular basis to get it reviewed and renewed. So it's a pretty closely held process here. And what uh, what new facts did we learn from, from this application being released, even though it was heavily redacted? Um, we learned a number of things. I mean, one, I guess I don't know that we learned this for the first time, but we learned that Devin Nunes is a discredited liar. And mm. I don't know if you want to get into this now or Let's wait do it. a little later. Okay. Let's do it. So... Remember when this was all being discussed in the first place. Uh, dumb Devin, our friend, and if you if you want Devin Nunes to leave Congress, check out Andrew Jans uh, for Congress's Twitter account, webpage, wherever webpage. you want to go. Just go Google his name. You'll get there. His www. Yeah, go um, to his www. They, Dev, <laughs> De- Devin tried to say, <laughs> Devin tried to say a bunch of things. One was at the Steele dossier. We all remember Chris Steele. He put together the P-tape dossier. Uh, was the sole basis of the FISA application. That is not true. Uh, Nunes also tried to say that the uh, steel, that the FISA uh, application didn't say who funded the steel dossier, that it came from a partisan source. That is not true. There's like an entire page of notes about how the source might have been compromised, and the judge is allowed to evaluate on that on the merits. Uh, we also learned that the FISA application wasn't solely based on the steel dossier and that it was approved by four Republican judges, uh, and then it got longer every time because new information was added, presumably because they learned things that were relevant or important about Carter Page in the process. Uh, and so we've learned that, you know, everything the Republicans have done in service of Donald Trump and trying to defend him uh, from charges of collusion has been a lie. But like the bigger problem here with Trump is that he tries to conflate the Page surveillance with the uh, the look into the collusion generally, like the the, right. the investigation into Russian interference in our election, and they're simply not the same thing. Well, that's – yeah. The FBI applied for this warrant in October of 2016, which was months after Carter Page left the Trump campaign. So he was no longer an employee of the Trump campaign. So the idea that it was to sabotage the Trump campaign is sort of silly. And it was already months 
after they had already opened an investigation into connections between Trump officials and the Russian government. So Because of the, George Papadopoulos. Because, so the idea that Republicans keep pushing, the Republican pundits keep pushing, that the whole Mueller investigation was based on the dirty dossier yeah. and, the, and this application is completely false. They opened the investigation after George Papadopoulos got drunk. In and London. Blab, in London. With some Australians he didn't know. And blabbed to an Australian diplomat about ha- meeting a professor who offered all kinds of dirt on Hillary Clinton. That's what began the investigation. Um in this, in this application, the FBI offered evidence that Page was the subject of, quote, targeted recruitment by Russia in its efforts to sabotage the 2016 election, and that he'd been, col- quote, collaborating and conspiring with the Russian government. They had probable cause to believe that. That is not a small thing. No. Also, that is, that is not a small thing. Carter took a trip to Russia in July of 2016. The Steele dossier alleged that he met with senior Russian officials. He lied and denied that. Uh, And then when pressed by the House Intelligence Committee, he finally admitted that he did meet with senior Russian officials, just not the ones mentioned in the Steele dossier. So Carter hasn't shown himself to be the most trustworthy narrator of his own life (laughs) and events. (laughs) Which, if you've ever seen him on TV, would not surprise you at all. all. Yeah, look, I think there's one thing we certainly don't understand, which is what makes Carter Page tick, you know? (laughs) What gets him out of bed? I don't care. I don't care how many uh, warrants for surveillance you've got on Carter Page. Yeah, you're, you're not need, figuring that out. You're gonna out. need a mystic and a divining <laughs> rod, and I don't know what. I mean, it's also important too because the, the whole thing, oh, the Steele dossier, because it was paid for by you know the Clinton campaign or the Democratic Party or law firms connected to the Democrats. It's garbage, right? It says in the application, in subsequent FISA renewals, the Department of Justice provided additional information obtained through multiple independent sources that corroborated Steele's reporting. Right. This is important. They did not just take the fucking Steele dossier and put it in an application and say to the judges, now go approve it. They independently corroborated the reporting that they needed to get the application with various other individuals, which is why the judges approved it. Then, But another very important point was even if they hadn't done that, in, in the same breath, Trump in his like asshole associates try to claim that the Steele dossier is biased and shouldn't be the basis for a FISA application. But they argue that Clinton Cash, an oppo research book paid for with Steve Bannon's money, should lead to an FBI investigation into Hillary. So they are lying idiots who are trying to have both sides. uh, And it's simply not how the process works. You are allowed to be a, a witness and have some sort of political or personal bias against the person you are discussing. Yeah. It's just, it basically boils down to this. The old conspiracy peddled by Nunes, Trump, Republicans, and all their favorite pundits on Fox was that the FBI had lied to these FISA judges, that somehow they had concealed things in the application and that they didn't. And now that we know that they revealed everything they needed to in the application, because now that the application is out, the new conspiracy is the judges were in on it too and someone should look in on the judges. This is what Andrew McCarthy uh, said on Fox News and Trump retweeted and Hugh Hewitt and all these people. The judges personally picked by John Roberts. Right. And look, and a lot of national security experts and, and legal people said we shouldn't focus too much on the fact that they're Republican appointed judges because just because they're judges and the judiciary is supposed to be independent should be enough for people. But it is worth pointing out that, yes, they were all Republican appointed judges selected by John Roberts. And, and I also think what's important to note is we're learning a lot of this, but Devin Nunes isn't. Because <laughs> he is hasn't a... read the application. <laughs> Devin uh... Nunes put together a memo. First of all, if we remember, he defeated himself in the memo, right? Because we actually learned from Devin Nunes' attempt to discredit this FISA application that it was also based on Papadopoulos and that that came first. So he kind of began discrediting himself earlier. But I also think we're in this debate now where we're debating whether or not the FISA application was legitimate. The FISA application is what, 400 pages? Mm -hmm. It is an extraordinary document. It is... A, <laughs> it has, first of all, tons of it is is blacked out and redacted. So we have actually it's no called a, the good stuff. Yeah, the good stuff that they're saving that for later. That is for the that series is, finale. That is season three. <laughs> yeah, we don't get that. We don't get that yet. We're gonna get thirty years from now. There's gonna be, uh, you know, we'll read it in Axios. Yeah, but yeah. so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll finally get to the wall. Go yeah. deep. Big fight will happen. Axios will release it, and of course they'll have the long form version, which is seven words. But of course, if you're too busy, there'll be a two word version. <laughs> It's just as good <laughs> shit. <laughs> but, but you know, we, you know, the three of us got into this debate over over the evolving explanations for the pro- pro- problems with the FISA application. Started with saying that the Steele dossier was the cause. Then it was, oh, the Steele dossier's provenance wasn't revealed. Now it's just, this seems weak and the judges are in on it. They're kind of running out of legs. To stand. To there's, the stool is out of legs, yeah. as I often I, say. I mean, but that is a big takeaway. 
Yeah, but, which is but, the, but let me just sorry, let me just finish ahead. the point, which is only that what we're talking about is uh, a ton of evidence about a conspiracy involving a foreign government to involve themselves in a presidential campaign uh, and uh, collude with the Donald Trump campaign and then administration. What we're talking about, the the scale of the scandal is sometimes lost in the debate over these picky and details about this warrant. But you read the thing and you read the little excerpts, you're like, this is, this is the FBI screaming, holy shit, there is a massive, massive conspiracy. It is incredibly dangerous and we need to find out what's going on. Right. The, the, the big, big, big picture takeaway for me is that Trump's biggest defenders, uh, the worst fringe right-wing media, the MAGA dead-enders like Kim Strassel and Hugh Hewitt, uh, Trump's kids, House Republicans, they will lie and cherry pick everything. Yeah, there's no Black explanation. Black is that white, was up is down. They don't care. It is so brazen. And the, and the bigger problem here is no one in the Republican Party is really checking them. Like Marco Rubio, who we criticize a lot on the show, to his credit, went on the Sunday shows and pushed back on the notion that this application showed any wrongdoing. But these guys... You know, they've refused to stand up for, to Trump for so long. And like every bully ever in the history of reality and film saw weakness and pushed and pushed and pushed until we got to here. And so, you know, Paul Ryan has allowed Devin Nunes to run the House Intelligence Committee, and it's been completely politicized. And we're in a place where there's just one news channel and one right wing sort of media ecosystem believes one thing based on an identical document. And it, yeah. it is it is hard for me to wrap my brain around how weird and crazy and dangerous that well, is. Well, because it's they've also succeeded in making this a fight about whether Devin Nunes is an idiot or a liar or not. When well, that's clear. The, yeah, right. <laughs> when the when the real takeaway, like you were saying, is like, oh my God, the FBI had probable cause with judges agreed with them that Carter Page was leading an effort to collude with the foreign government, who we know now, because they've been indicted for this, um, sabotaged our election. And and, 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 and references many other people. Sorry, and, and potentially other people. And specifically, one thing that has been public for a while, but is not talked about enough, the fact that um, Carter Page went to Moscow <laughs> shortly before he joined the campaign, and then the Republican convention was held, and even though the entire Republican establishment did not want the platform to be changed, to be more pro-Russia than it was, somehow the Trump campaign decided to make the platform more pro-Russia. <laughs> it's a, it's and it was And it was right when Manafort started in the campaign. It was after Carter Page yeah. came to Russia. And the FBI said, we have probable cause to believe that these people are involved in collusion. And I just want to think to Tommy's point, too. All these people that are kind of going out on a limb now to continue to claim that there's a problem with the FISA application, with this investigation... They are doing it uh, out of a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons is they allowed themselves to be co-opted and admitting now that they got taken for a ride by Devin Nunes is somehow too hard to admit. And so instead mm -hmm. they say, uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, I know I said that the dossier was uh, used in a fraudulent way, but actually it's just that now the overall application is weak. Uh, you, no one who is now making these claims that this application has a problem would be doing it if they hadn't gone out on a limb because Devin Nunes lied to them. And yeah. admitting that they were dupes of Devin Nunes and the Trump administration is, uh, I think, uh, hard for some people. Tough yeah. for the intellectual Zamboni. But in, in, yeah, to, it is. To your point about the the platform, I mean, Putin's wish list is not long <laughs> and it's not subtle. You know, I mean, he doesn't like the Magnitsky sanctions. He wants those to go away. He doesn't want us to give lethal support to Ukraine. He comes back to the same things over and over again publicly and has his little cutouts and intermediaries run these ideas uh, up against Don Jr. and Manafort and Jared and the gang privately. So, again, the whole thing is in plain sight. Right. Sitting right there. Yeah. Yeah. The only piece, the only piece that remains a mystery is why Donald Trump himself uh, behaves uh, so solicitous with such solicitousness towards Vladimir Putin. The rest is all kind of right there out in the open for all of us to see, except there's just one piece of information we're missing, and it may involve urine, or, or it, it may involve, involve the fact that Vladimir money Putin, laundering, or that he, that Vladimir Putin kept evidence that Trump went along with all of his wishes on the wish list. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. So, we don't know. Um, so uh, as if all of this weren't enough, Trump caps off the weekend by all caps tweeting the following to the president <laughs> of Iran on Sunday night. Never, ever threaten the United States again or you will suffer consequences the likes of which few throughout history have ever <sighs> suffered before. We are no longer a country that will stand for your demented words of violence and death. Be cautious. 
<laughs> great, great kicker there. Be cautious. I just think it's like driving your car 120 miles an hour down the highway and screaming "Be cautious" out the window at people you yeah. blast by. Like you calm down, psychopath. It, Tom, it, what, it what looks would... like a speech from Armageddon. It's, <laughs> it, like it, you expect there to be kind of orange and blues and kind of a Dutch angle and Aerosmith playing. Yeah, Tommy, what was that? Uh, what was that all about? And how freaked out should we be? Um, the Trump team has started this sort of PR effort. Uh, that where they're talking about corruption among top regime officials. The goal is essentially to weaken and destabilize the regime and try to punish them for their nuclear program. And so mm. um, I haven't seen a lot of intelligence on Iran in many, many years, but uh, you know, I suspect this plan to criticize and destabilize the current Iranian regime it seems more likely to create a void that will be filled by the IRGC and military leaders like Qasem Soleimani, et cetera. I also think those bad people that we don't like. Bad guys who run the military and are accused of terrorist acts. Um, Pompeo, Secretary of State Pompeo, is out there giving these speeches saying he wants to, to, to talk to the Iranian people and help their quality of life, but he forgets that they're all suffering because we pulled out of the Iran deal. Uh, and now they're going to get sanctioned again, and Trump's Muslim ban prevents them from entering the country. So, you know, a smart reporter from NPR pointed out that when Putin released a video of uh, allegedly invincible ICBMs with warheads striking Mar-a-Lago, Trump didn't respond with a crazy all-cap tweet. But, mm. you know, it's good politics to go after Iran. Uh, so here we are. Yeah, there, there's... Boop. there's a... <laughs> There's larger questions about their policy towards Iran, but when Donald Trump picks up the phone to do a big crazy tweet on a Sunday in a week in which we've seen stories about, you know, A, uh, the fact that his lawyer taped him, great lawyer, buddy. He chose a real top-notch lawyer there. Uh, uh, and B, the fact that he's in the pocket of Vladimir Putin in a way that is now openly being discussed. It really felt to me like this is a guy shaking the edge of sketch and just oh, totally. yeah, trying was, to change well, the scenario. That was going to be my last question before we move on. Like, it is when Trump goes on these rage tweet storms, you always wonder, like, is it just uh, he happens to have a break in his schedule and he's pretty bored and he's been watching TV that got him upset? Is it some kind of a distraction, which I never usually think is true because he's not really playing chess here? Um, or is it something else? Does he know something's coming? It does seem like maybe this round has been, um, I want to change the subject from the Putin mess last week. I, I think this is both. I, I totally agree with you. I mean, I, like, what time did he send that last night? Like 11 p.m.? Yeah. It was very late. Late night. I definitely think this and the stupid Rand Paul, let's go after people's security clearances thing, like they're targeting John Brennan and trying to strip him of security clearance. So this is like, I think, chum in the water to create a news story. But the Iran stuff does dovetail with a policy decision. Like in three weeks we're going to reimpose banking sanctions that were suspended after the Iran deal. And we've told all these other countries that they have until November to stop buying uh, oil and gas from Iran. So like it is kind of converging in a strange way, uh, a strange, terrifying, potentially destabilizing way. Right. I just think he looked at a buffet of distraction options totally. and thought the Iran one would work. He and was right. He was, well, part of me, honestly, I hope a tweet from him uh, does distract because uh, at a certain point, as the news for him gets worse and worse, he's going to need to find uh, more and more heinous and uh, um, outsized ways of distracting us. And man, if he starts figuring out that words don't work, I'm going to get very nervous. Yeah. So North Korea goes from little rocket man to his good pal, Kim Jong-un, mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin, buddy that he's inviting to the White House. Bestie. And now Iran, angry with them, no. all caps, threat, tweet. No bueno. Okay, so it's interesting. Very, very cohesive policy. Seems yes. like he's got a, a real doctrine that he's... Okay. Well, look, you have you thought leaders like Ari Fleischer out there saying that, you know, he's right to try to destabilize the Iranian regime because that always turns out well. Yeah, Honestly, no, Ari Fleischer's never uh, been involved in a bad foreign policy for decision. the Iraq war. Under Donald, the yes. Yeah. Donald Trump uh, could give Alaska back, and we'd be hearing about how it was part of a grand strategic <laughs> bargain. Uh, nonsense. <laughs> also, I just, also, John Bolt, it's worth remembering, too, that... Uh, John Bolton, uh, hawk, America must be tough. We should never appease. Obama is, a, is weak. These Democrats are weak. He has now been reduced to sending paperless posts to Vladimir Putin, uh, who has faced no consequences right. for uh, attacking our country. It. Couldn't but happen to a better guy. Ambassador Bolton does want re regime change, so maybe this is uh, you know one for him, one for me. I thought he wanted regime change in other countries, but... <laughs> <laughs>